Hello everyone. In this video, I want to talk about how to multiply decimal numbers together. Now this process for multiplying decimal numbers, or the algorithm for multiplying decimal numbers, is actually very similar to the process for multiplying whole numbers together. However, there is one additional step that we need to do to make sure that we take into account our decimals. So what I want to do, take a look at a couple examples and we'll talk through the process. So my first example, I have 3.2 times 0.41. So the first thing, if I want to multiply these together, let's rearrange this and write these vertically. So we have 3.2 times 0.41. Now, unlike addition or subtraction, I don't need to worry about lining up my decimal points because as I go through this multiplication, I'm actually gonna treat these as whole numbers first. I'm not gonna worry about the decimals until the very end. So let's just go through our multiplication algorithm. So we start with the one. I'm gonna multiply that by both the numbers in the top here. So one times two is two, and one times three, we end up with three. Moving on to the next number, we need to add a zero. Four times two is eight. And then four times three, we get 12. So now we're gonna add these two numbers together. So we end up with two, three and eight is 11. So we'll carry the one. One and two is three. And then the one comes down. So just our standard multiplication algorithm. Now, once I completed that, the last thing we need to do is take a look at our decimals. So I'm gonna count the total number of decimal spots we have between the two numbers in our multiplication. So our first number here, we have one number after the decimal. So that's just one decimal spot. Our second number here, we have the four and the one. So we have two numbers after the decimal. So we have two decimal spots. So that means we have a total of three decimal numbers. So then to find out my final answer, I'm gonna start at the very right of my answer down here. And because I have three decimal numbers, I need to count one, two, three numbers to the left, and then that is where my decimal is going to go. So we have 1.312 as our final answer. So essentially, mathematically, what we're doing here is by multiplying these numbers as if they're whole numbers first. So just to show you here, so if I want to rewrite this, the way that we did it initially is I actually just thought about it as 32 times 41. Okay, but how do I get 32 and how do I get 41? Well to get from 3.2 to 32, we would need to multiply by 10 to move that decimal spot one place to the right. To go from 0.41 to 41, here I would actually need to multiply by 100, or that's multiplying by 10 twice, so multiplying by 10 squared. So that will give me these two values, but that won't be the same as what we need so then at the end, to undo the multiplying by powers of 10, what we're doing is we're dividing by them. So we treat it as if we're multiplying by 10 a couple of times to start with, to make the multiplication easier. And then to get back to what we wanted, we divide by the same number of tens to get to our decimal. So let's try one more example, a little bit more complicated, got some more numbers here. So again, first thing, we'll rewrite this vertically. So 12.05 times 4.31. And just like on the last one, we're gonna treat these as if they're whole numbers first. So we'll start with the one. One times five, we get five. One times zero, one times two, and one times one. Moving on to the three, we'll add in a zero. Three times five, we get 15 we need to carry the one. Three times zero is zero plus one. Three times two is six, and three times one is three. And then moving on to our last number, moving on to the four, we need to put in two zeros. 
4 times 5 is 20, and then we'll carry the 2. 4 times 0 plus 2. 4 times 2 is 8, and 4 times 1 is 4. And now we'll add all of these together. So we have 5, second column we have 5, 2 and 1 is 3, 1, 6, and 2 is 9, 3 and 8 is 11, so we'll carry the 1, and 1 and 4 is 5. So there's our result from our multiplication. Now we'll go back up and we'll take a look at the number of decimal spots. So our first number, we have the 0 and the 5, so we have two decimal spots there. In the second one, we have 3 and 1, so that's another two decimal spots. So that gives us a total of four decimal spots we need to move our decimal. So 1, 2, 3, and 4. So in between the 1 and the 9 is where we need to put our decimal for our final answer. So we end up with 51.9355 as the product of those two decimals. Oh, <laughs>